Um, you've heard me talk about these mentors that came into my life uh, three and a half years ago. Joseph was not way. one of them, um, <laughs> but we're glad to have him here anyways, because he knows them. He knows them, so it's like... I know of, I knows of them. <laughs> can talk about them. Good job. Yeah. You're pressing your butt. Yo, what up guys, it's Gary Vee, and it's time for the Daily Bread. Give us our daily bread, I want the whole basket. Cause I'ma hustle till I get it or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way. Not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward, right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry cause it's time for the Daily Bread. Freaking busy office, stupid work. Let's do a couple phone calls. I am. Well, I do have a, I have a question. Yeah. Um. I'm with Tyler Harris. Test, 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 what can I? Test, 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 test. I'll just pretend like I'm doing my thing over here and you can go ahead and intro us for episode 58. So, Joseph, go ahead and intro episode 58 and then we'll get rolling. All right, welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I am Joseph Caldwell and how do you want, you want me to introduce you to? He's not ready. Did you just say Sales Wolves podcast? This is the Breadwinner podcast. This is our... <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's going on here today? So we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do a Breadwinners podcast on the Sales Wolves podcast. My Podcast, gosh. podcast. It, does that mean that it's not really a podcast because it's a double podcast negative? Wait a minute. A double negative podcast? A double podcast. So does that Time erase zero itself? Zero. Time zero is zero. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So bear with us because I'm going to do the intro here on the Breadwinner podcast. For those of you that have not subscribed to the best podcast on earth, it's fundamentally the biggest mistake you're making in life. To the MFCEO project. <laughs> oh, you're talking about yours? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dude, well, I love uh, the Breadwinner podcast, especially your your last episode with Wendy. That was yes. the last episode, right? Yep. Dude, she's Posted awesome. Posted another one this morning, but yeah, that was yesterday. It was awesome. Yeah. All right. What's up, everybody? This is the Breadwinner podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Harris, and we have a very, 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 <laughs> what word am I looking for? Special. Oh, yeah. <laughs> guest in the house today. We are actually live recording the Sales Wolves podcast as he is the co-host of that. Uh, but we got him on the Breadwinner podcast on a Sales Wolves podcast. So it's That's like a tongue a, twister. What did you say? What's the, you always say a riddle mixed in a... That's a riddle wrapped in an enigma. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> a mystery wrapped in a riddle inside an enigma. It is all that and more. And so, the shooter doesn't even know who killed Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to jump right in. Uh, but we got Joseph Caldwell here. And um, a lot of you that have been following any of my content, um, you've heard me talk about these mentors that came into my life uh, three and a half years ago. Joseph was not way. one of them. Um, <laughs> but we're glad to have him here anyways. <laughs> Because he knows them. He knows them. So it's like... I knows of, I knows of them. <laughs> Fucking talk about them. <laughs> no, but in all reality, Joseph has been one of the biggest mentors and person that's been instrumental in this transformation that I've gone through over the past few years. And um, I'm extremely grateful for that. I'm not going to look him in the eye when I say it, but um, it's a podcast, so you didn't see it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> you only heard him not look me in the eye. And you can only imagine I'm sitting here petting a skull. So we're, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to give Joseph a couple of minutes just to introduce himself. For those of you that have not gotten to meet him on the Sales Wolves podcast or on his social media yet. Um, but Joseph, tell everybody who you are. Are, what you do, where you're from, um, anything Caldwell specific. From, Black Mount, from a very small town, Black Mountain, North Carolina. 
and um, CEO of Consolidated Assurance. We run the First Responder Task Force and uh, across the country. Um, and that's how we met. Yep. But, uh, but man, a little bit about myself. I'm nothing special. There's nothing special about I've me. Already you, told them you've that. already <laughs> you, you've already graced them with that, <laughs> but uh, but that's what people don't understand is 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 I have just realized where I wanted to go in life and what my purpose was and surround myself with people like that are similar mm -hmm. and wanting to go and do something special too. Um, you know, a lot of times people in my position they talk about they pulled themselves up by their bootstrap and. I'm never going to feed people that shit. Mm -hmm. I'm not a self-made man. Uh, I look around and everything, most, almost every decision I make, I've learned how to make that through mentors in my life. And so that's why it's such a special, it's a special thing when you look down and not look me in the eye and call me a mentor. <laughs> Don't spit that coffee or water you just drank. But, uh, but anyway, that's, that's a little bit. Married, four children, and four, I love my kids, love my wife. Um, I have three daughters, 15, well, she's turning 15, but right now I have 14, 13, 12, and a 10-year-old. My son's 10. And uh, so those those fill up a good portion of my life, which I love. But uh, anyway, that's me. Awesome, man. So we're just going to jump right into the first question. So you and I both love this statement of the fact that every successful person has a painful story, and then the part we always tap onto the end where your painful story have a successful ending. So give us one of those. You've told me a few here lately that I hadn't heard before, uh, but give the, the listeners one painful story that happened for you, not to you, uh, that's made you who you are today. Yeah, so we had to, I mean, you know what? Everybody does what they have to do. Like, mm -hmm. I, I see people that are in situations and they don't have money and and you do what you have to do, right? And so we could not, and by we, you know, like I like to include my wife in the, we couldn't make it in those days. And then I like <laughs> to just say, I made it. No. <laughs> but no, we, I was, I, I couldn't, I couldn't cut it, man. I wasn't making the money and I was working three different, three different things. I won't call them careers or jobs or I won't call them purpose driven anything. I was just working three different things. And, and so the way that we fed our four kids was there was a sidewalk sale outside of a grocery store in this area where they would literally sell boxes of um, uh, retired food, expired, what do you call it? expired yeah, yeah. food. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> See, I'm not that smart. <laughs> the food was retired um, <laughs> on a beach in the islands, but uh, the the food was expired, and and some of it, some of it like six, eight months, two a year, year two years expired. Yeah. But man, it was eight dollars a box. All right, and they had these in rows. And probably, probably 200 people that were poor as shit like me would show up at the same time, and uh, and and they would. You couldn't go until they blew a whistle. <laughs> Did I tell you this part? This was also filmed. It was a reality TV show. Dude, I'm telling you, man. You couldn't. You couldn't go. And so what I would do is I'd get there early and I'd pace around the whole area and see where I could see stuff that I knew mm -hmm. I could feed my kids, right? Yeah. And uh, and stuff that stuff that probably would like cereal is not going to go bad if I could get you know mm -hmm. fifteen boxes of this obscure cereal that nobody on God's green earth wanted you know what I'm saying <laughs> mm -hmm. like that was a win and the boxes were eight bucks a box and so literally my my oldest can still remember because I take her mm -hmm. she was probably five six at the time and uh, and 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 Kim and me and our five six seven year old would would get and we would point out the one she had to get and and Kim and I would have our eyes on the one and for real like people would would get a box and they would start putting like oh let's take this out of this box like they were shopping yeah. oh yeah dude I karate chopped them old people in the throat <laughs> and I would grab a box put it on top of another box put it on top of another box <laughs> and I would tote three at a time over to our space and so sometimes we would put our kid guard in the space right because mm -hmm. people would try to come come snatch shit out your box and oh, yeah. I'm gonna knock some old lady out you know that was probably on you know a, you know fixed income and wasn't mm -hmm. making it herself but when you're in that situation you can't really care about what yeah. other people are going through because sure. you only care what you you can't you can't focus on anyone else when you're when you're not making it when the wolves are at your door you don't care about the guy on the street where the wolves are devouring him yeah. you can't yeah. you can't because in that fear and anxiety place it shuts down all of your frontal lobe and you mm -hmm. act out of instinct you want to you got to make it so literally 
I would get probably six to 10, 12 boxes. Hmm. And, uh, and we would go back and, and, and our kids thought it was Christmas every <laughs> Saturday, man. We would line this stuff up and section it all out. And that's how we ate. That's how I'm we seeing, ate. I'm man. envisioning your daughter when everybody's standing in line waiting for this whistle, just kind of crawling around, tying everybody's shoelaces yeah. together. <laughs> <laughs> and then blew the whistle and just tripping, tripping over them. You know, I went back. I went back when I didn't have to go back. We yeah. still did it for several because it's hard. It's hard to let go of those, right? Because mm-hmm. you're because you're in a scarcity mindset. It's hard to let go of that yeah. scarcity mindset. Yeah. So we would go back, and I would still buy them. But when I would go and buy boxes <laughs> this time, I'd be like, "Hey, pay for all these people's boxes yeah. too." Because I know I was a I was a jerk in the beginning. I was like, mm-hmm. "Look, I'm faster than you. <laughs> I'm going to beat you to that box." Like people are like, "Oh, I've got that box there," and I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> you better be quick off the line, buddy." <laughs> but that's uh, awesome. but that's that's one of the many stories you know yeah. that I could tell. <laughs> Post. So I'm trying to figure out the caption for this post because the post says, while you're looking for the finish line, I'm just getting started. I'm trying to think of like, you know that phrase, a means to an end. I'm trying to think of a way to say like, what if, um, what if the means to an end was the end? Like what if, because so many people like in their career, they don't even look at their career like, their job they're like oh it's just a means to an end but like what if that's the whole purpose of life is like the means is the end like the means is it's everything um it's interesting so how would you say that so a means to an so what if what if what if the means to an end what if you create the end yeah like (laughs) but it's not like it's not the end but it's like it's the end goal Posting ain't easy. (laughs) Wait. (laughs) What if everything you used as a means to an end was the actual end itself? Most people are so focused on the finish line that they never get to enjoy the race. We have a special guest today. Steve, we are moving to grooving for the meltdown. How are we feeling? We're feeling good. Once we make this full announcement on everybody who's coming, I have absolutely no doubt. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an absolute honor to bring on somebody who's going to be joining us at the Meltdown in the Desert. You may see him from the Daily Bread. If you're following anything that's happening on social media, you see this dude and what he's doing. He is blasting through the universe. Please welcome our guest, Mr. Tyler Harris. What's happening, dude? What is up? Man, I'm glad to be here. My man, tell for, for for people who don't know who you are, give give us a quick introduction. Yes, and that's ninety nine point nine percent of you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Tyler Harris. I live in Greenville, South Carolina, and uh, man, I'm just uh, all in on this social media thing. And uh, man, I was so happy to hear the topic or the. Um, the uh, what do you call it? What what is the legacy? Theme. It's the, the, theme. the theme. God, that's the word. The theme of this uh, of the meltdown of the desert this year because that's one hundred percent the only reason why I do what I do uh, on social media. So man, I know we'll get into that, but um, but I have a life insurance company. Uh, that's my day to day primary source of income and and uh, in my career. And this social media is just what I'm doing on top of it as a way to pay it forward and hopefully provide value and make an impact in somebody's life to leave that legacy. So I'm um, excited to be here, man. I've, I've uh, been following this event. I haven't been able to come before, but every single person I've talked to about it, it's like, it's like no other event I've heard someone talk about. It's almost like they start smiling and they're just like, you know, they have this like, it's like this family, just like warm, everyone just kind of just starts like bubbling when they talk about it. So man, I cannot wait. Um, the recap video from last year is just absolutely incredible. And so I just can't wait to be there, period. Friends. 